everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today we're going to um, do some sunflowers and I've got two pictures of sunflowers here, not mine, um, from two of my favourite um, authors. We're not going to do anything like this at all. This is just to show you, because I don't happen to have any sunflowers because where I live we don't really have them. We're in Brittany and especially this year because it's been so gosh darn cold. Um, sunflowers are certainly a long way from happening. We. <laughs> It's like it's winter again. Anyway, um, but this is a book by someone called Karen Simmons, who I think is an English artist. And this is one very loose take on a sunflower. And she's used yellow and something like quinacridone gold, and probably burnt sienna and sap green to create this and probably a bit of cobalt blue, which is, oh, these are the colors that I'm going to use as well. But we're not going to do anything like that. Um, and here's another one. This is by another favourite artist of mine, Anne Blockley, who is the daughter of um, the long lamented John Blockley, who was an absolutely brilliant artist. Well, she's not bad. Um, nothing like him, though. But anyway, so here is her version of a sunflower. Um, we've done some like this before, and you'll find something very similar to this, at least two versions of a sunflower like that, but we're not going to do it anything like that either. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to use these colours. So sap green, um, transparent yellow, cobalt blue, quinacridone gold, uh, burnt sienna and um, Van Dyke brown. Going to use a couple of medium sized round brushes, um, a pencil and an eraser and a Stettler pigment liner. This is waterproof permanent ink. And um, there was a question on um, the comments uh, just recently from a lady who had used a permanent marker in order to do some drawing um, and then she'd put watercolour over the top of it and it had run. And just to remind people that permanent doesn't mean waterproof. Permanent means that it probably won't fade and it's going to stay stuck. It's not, uh, what's the word? You know, when you put it on one of those whiteboards and you do it with a permanent marker and you can't get it off afterwards and you feel really embarrassed because you've written something really rude on the notice board at work and you can't get it off. Yes, that's happened to me. Um, anyway, no, so this is permanent, but it's also waterproof. That is the important thing. It should say on here, waterproof on paper and light fast. So, and indelible, and it says Vasafest, indelible, indelible, and all sorts of other languages. So that's that. So there we are. Now I'm going to do a sketch and I'm going to be back in a minute when I've done it. Don't go away. I'll be back in a tick. Okay, so I've drawn a sketch now of one, two, three sunflowers, um, some cornflowers, a few ears of wheat, a couple of bees and a butterfly in the middle. And um, as I always say at this point, I'm in two minds about how to uh, start this painting, whether to do it as pure watercolour, whether to um, come in and do line first with a waterproof pen, whether to paint it and then come in afterwards, which I tend not to do because I often find that once I've done the watercolour, I don't want to um, go over it with line, unless it's failed, of course, in which case, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of line would probably help. Um, but so just talking about it, I'm sort of thinking, mm, I don't know really, but I think I'll probably start by just coming in with some yellow and, and breaking the, um, the spell of the white paper and just start painting because it's all about just enjoying the process, isn't it really? So I've um, started with some transparent, I think this is, uh, yes, it's a uh, transparent yellow and I'm just going to um, add to that some quinacridone gold. So we'll just paint the petals in quite loosely 
like that and uh, I'll probably do all three of them in that way. I'm using um, one of my Japanese watercolour brushes here. This is a slightly older one, it doesn't have a very sharp point to it but that's okay because I want this to be somewhat relaxed and not looking for fine detail in this particular painting. I did wonder about putting a bird in the middle, you could easily do that but um, I end ended up thinking, oh, I think butterflies, because we've done, done quite a lot of butterflies lately, we've done a lot of birds as well, but um, but yeah, so anyway, I've drawn a butterfly. Um, okay, so now this one down here, and this one's going to be slightly more orangey in colour, because the quinacridone has mixed in uh, with the transparent yellow or the cadmium yellow, it could be cadmium, it doesn't really matter which colour you use. Um, I've looked at lots of pictures and paintings of sunflowers over the years and I have to say that they vary a lot, don't they? That depends on, I think, where you are and, uh, I don't know, the maturity of the plant and what kind of sunflower it is and so on and so forth. So, um, so okay, so that's the first layer of sunflower and then for the centres I'm going to assume that the, the centres are kind of halfway through their ripening process. They're not absolutely dark and not absolutely light. When they're early on in the process they tend to be on the green side, don't they? Um, and then they go much darker as they get ripe. But in the middle they're kind of brownish, so I've just put the first layer in there. And uh, then we're going to put in some of the leaves, I think, so we'll mix sap green with quinacridone gold to get a softer kind of green and then we'll just um, put in some leaf shapes down here and we'll vary them a bit some of them are going to be brighter than others but we'll always vary the colour by coming in with another um, tone as well and have the stem there and something down here, perhaps we'll just water that down to run away to nothing, something like that. You can always as well, if you want to loosen it up even more, just put a few drops of water in and let things kind of flow a bit. And if you feel you've got a little bit too much paint, for example, you could possibly uh, think that was the case there, so you might just dab it out a little bit. And later we can kind of fill in these gaps if you want to because um, you can't do that at the moment though because it's wet. Um, if you want to, that's not big enough, this one will do I think, you can draw in a line for your veins using a scratchy implement which will draw the paint into those lines and make them darker so that's a good thing to do. And um, I'm going to use cobalt blue for the um, for the cornflower. So I'm just going to drop in um, areas of light blue like this, and I'll refine the flowers a little bit later. I know I did three. That's two. There was another one somewhere, wasn't there? Oh, here. Right there we go. Three blue flowers. Make that one bigger than that one. And those have um, a green um, thing behind, whatever that's called. There we are. And then we want to put some more. There's a stem for the sunflower and So there's another leaf up here. And then I had some corn. So I need to make a mixture colour. 
sort of golden brown. So we're going to mix um, yellow. Yes, that will do. This one here. Uh, another one here. I think we had one down here. Okay, so we're going to have to let this dry off a little bit. So now I'm going to, I'm going to do the butterfly wet in wet. So we just uh, wet the whole body of the butterfly, sorry, the whole wings of the butterfly and the body. And I'm going to do that blue. So we take some reasonably strong blue and I'm just dropping it in at the edges there. And then we'll put the body, to make the body a little bit darker. And just let that spread. And I'm not sure if that's dry enough yet to come back in with some darker colour. Yes, we can try that. Okay, and um, now the B these are black, yellow, black, yellow. I always have to remind myself that the head is black and then it has yellow behind, black, yellow, like that. Another one here, black, yellow. And then I always put a little bit of um, quinacridone into all of the yellow patches there, just to bleed and we need that to dry a little bit and to run a little bit and uh, at this point I usually I try to evaluate where the painting's going um, I'm going to drop a bit more blue into the um, flowers sometimes you never know how the painting is going to go because the paper might not be exactly the way you had expected but um so this isn't black this is brown mixed with blue to give a softer dark and i'm hoping it's not going to run too much this one looks like it's run quite a lot Do not panic. Just lift it out and call him loose. Okay. Um, I am going to have to let this dry in a minute. I'm going to put another ear of corn in here. And I think I'll put another one up here. Uh, 
and let's add some some more green to these leaves down here. I think probably we want another one here. And a bit more in here. Okay, we'll stop for a minute, let that dry. Okay, so this has dried. And uh, so now I'm going to do a little bit more watercolor work. Um, the uh, uh, cornflowers, we're just going to indicate roughly the shape of the petals, which uh, are kind of frilly edged, but we're not going to make big fuss about doing those in any detail. We'll just put a little bit of colour there in the centre to give some indication. And then um, it has a kind of uh, bulbous sort of, um, what do you call it, whatever it is, <laughs> there. And uh, I think the leaves kind of a bit like that. A bit too much green and not enough blue there, so we put more blue in on that side. And then just out a little bit. Okay, and this one down here, similarly. Just bring the petals out make them divide near the ends like that, just a little bit more blue in there. And um, the corn, we need to, uh, we could say let's, let's um, shape the uh, seeds on the ears of corn a little bit and then just blur that. Might want to put a bit of more yellow in there.
some greenery down here behind this area and then maybe we'll do this other cornflower Okay, let's put the bees, no, not brown. Let's put the bees' wings in in very light blue. Then I'm going to grab my pen. And uh, we're going to put the antennae and the little legs of the bees. And that's the head. This one. Darken that up a little bit where the paint ran. And oh, that one hasn't been painted yet. So come in with some dark. Okay, so now what we could do is we could do a little bit of pen work on the, um, the petals of the flowers. So basically coming in and outlining the petals where we drew them originally. This just gives them a little bit more shape. how free you want this to be. If you wanted it to be completely loose, you don't need to do the pen work, but you can. And then you might want to do the same on the leaves. And the stem here. And you can do some squiggles if you want on the center do some squiggly uh, knitting like this you can get a really nice effect and then having done that you might want to come back with a little bit more color and just add some darker tones to the back ones for example some of the back ones might want to be a little bit darker and nearer to the base of the flower as well. So you can do that. Just to add a little bit more intensity. And then we can do this one up here. So do the petals.
And then again. This is just one way of doing texture on the center of the flower. If you leave a blank part like that with no color in it, then when you go over it with the pen, it gives an interesting effect. One of the easiest ways. And then we pick up a little bit more quinacridone gold and emphasize some of the darker side. Don't make them all the same amount of darkness. Leave some of them really light like that. And then we've got a big one up the back here. You might, uh, God, this is point three, so I might change to a bigger nib. I'll go for my point eight for this part here, where it's obviously a little bit closer. So we're going to make all of these details a little bit bigger. And then again, the color. Using a little bit of burnt sienna there as well as as well as the uh, quinacridone gold. Okay, so that's that one, and uh, we do the same over here. And uh, we might um, well, I've done a little bit of um, detail on the butterfly already, but if I do another little bit of line there, and then pick up some dark blue. I can do one side. If you just darken one side, then that gives you a little bit more as if the light's coming from, from the left. And then for the, uh, the ears of corn, we can put the, the seeds in. to make the hairs because they quite often they have kind of hairiness to them. <coughs> okay, so this one. the size of your scribbles. A little bit of burnt sienna on one side, like that. Maybe some little bit more quinacridone on this side. sure if this is dry enough yet but you can oh no that's the wrong one you can if you want emphasize the lines on the uh, cornflower but I'm I'm rather sort of veering away from that I think I probably won't We 
don't have to do every one, could just do a few. And then we have our final sunflower, which is up here, which I popped in when no one was looking because I decided that my composition needed um, adjusting. And for goodness sake, don't be afraid to change things. Sometimes the paint uh, just behaves differently from what you expect or it doesn't, um, the composition isn't what you thought you were aiming for. So if you want to change it, change it. You don't need to stick with either following what I did or what you thought you were going to do in the beginning. This is quinacridone gold. I might add a bit more bright yellow on this side. In fact, I might add a bit more bright yellow in various places to brighten them up even more. So they are looking, but leave, make sure you leave plenty of white. Don't go over all the white because that's what gives it a bit of a sparkle. So when you go around and you do, you're adding more colour, don't, uh, don't think you have to cover up every single little bit of white paper. So we're going to just put a few grasses in the background here. And this area here is a bit undefined say the least, as is that. I don't know that it really knows what it's trying to be. So we put some grass, some greeny grassy colours in the background there. Bring that out a little bit more. Could say winging it at this point. And sometimes when you get to this stage in a painting, you really want to put a mount around it so that you can see where you're at. Okay, so I can see at this stage, I need to um, do some line work on there. I need to do something about this area here. Uh, line work there and there. And uh, maybe I need to sharpen up the cornflowers a little bit more. But uh, it's uh, on track. It's on track. So I'm going to continue with that. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of spatter here in green, I think, greeny gold. So that will be uh, quinacridone and cobalt, just to make that look like it was meant to be. Okay, 
and there we are. Now I'm going to let that dry again. And I think we'll probably call it done. Let's see how it looks with the mount. Okay, so there we are. I think we can call that painting finished. Thank you very much for being with me today and for following along as I did this uh, impromptu loose watercolour pen and ink sunflower extravaganza. Um, if you want the uh, line sketch for this, please go to dianeanton.com where you can download for free all of the watercolour sketches that belong to the paintings that we've been doing together. Um, so that's at dianeanton.com. And I'll just say goodbye for now and I'll see you again soon. Bye everybody, bye bye.